Welcome to the Debian Human Project. I'm your host, Debian, but you could call me Deb. Welcome to the Debian Newman Project. So your fan base noticed that you made a major change last year. But before we even right. jump into that change that you that you made, we have to backtrack a little bit to talk about you being mm -hmm. in the music industry and the type of songs that you are known for, like Psycho Doll, Real Bad Girl. Tell me a little about that mm -hmm. and how you got started in the industry. Okay, get it. Starting in the industry, uh, I really got started when I entered Magnum Kings and Queens of the Dance Hall. But I was exposed to music from a very tender age. Um, people like Karen Smith and her husband, Mr. Jackson, they used to live here and his band members used to live here at my house. And so um, I was exposed to music, singers and uh, instrument players. Also, um, a group, Ebony, one of the members lived close by here and I used to, I grew up around her and she kind of honed my craft. I used to sing actually. And uh, right throughout high school, um, I knew that I wanted to be a singer. And uh, um, when I was, when I just finished college, I was working with somebody and Lady Saw, he recorded Lady Saw and she had a show and she sent for me and another girl named Renee. Renee was in Rising Stars and Michelle done the show. And from there is like, I just knew that from there I said, hey, hardcore dance is what I wanted to do because I did a singing song first and the, the reception was good. But when my DJ, the whole place tear down, so I say, okay, I'm going to start DJ more. And uh, I used to be shy, but I pushed myself by entering Magnum Kings and Queens of the dance hall. And that was my stepping stone really into the industry. That's where I got known. And okay. then I was signed to Tommy. Huh? No, I'm, I'm listening. I'm taking it all in. Oh, okay. And then I was... Um, and then I was working with my brother. My brother used to run a studio in Flanka, Sniper Studio. And all of the hot acts from Mobe used to be there, including Tommy Lee. And, uh, you know, him, him, we used to hang out and everything. And he always said, whenever I'm getting break, he, he wants me and another female, a singer. And he him really fulfilled it. And I was signed to him for three years from there. Then I started doing my own thing on my own, just working and doing it on my own, basically. All right. So let me ask you this, though. In, within mm -hmm. the, the music industry, females tend to speak about the struggles that they face, just trying to break, just trying to work with a producer or collab. Um, what are mm -hmm. some of, of the struggles that you found yourself facing while you were in that industry? Um, hmm. I got I got some of those things. Like producer said to me, "Be good to me, and and be good to me, and I'll be good to you." I have a rhythm I come out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll pay them something they don't mind. But um, I, I, yeah, I got advances, but I did not act upon them, none at all. Um, airplay, airplay was a problem sometimes. And um, uh, what else? Proper management. I had problem with that too. Just having the, the right people who, who, um, who was ready at the time to just invest everything, mm -hmm. you know? Those are some of the things that I faced. Um, yeah, I, I, um, 
Yeah, basically that with collaborations. All right, so let me tell you, for a female artist, you have to you have to work hard or twice as hard as the male to get your respect. So basically, I focused on constructing lyrics that could stand up with them and them. So on a stage show, I could hold my own with them and do some freestyle so people could hear my lyrical prowess. So mm -hmm. that really helped me along the way. Do you also found that working with um, Tamily, it kind of made it easier for you, like open doors? Definitely, because um, he had a very wide fan base and uh, I, being a part of that, I was open to his fan base too. So that helped me. Mm -hmm. All right, so mm -hmm. have you been in communication with him considering everything that's happening in uh, happening with him right now? I haven't spoken to him since he got locked up, but I spoke to him before. All right, so I'm going to jump into the meat of everything right now, what everyone wants to find out. Why mm -hmm. did Destiny decided to make that major transition from the dance hall into Christianity. What was the experience that caused that, that break? Hmm. All right, well, at that time, career-wise, everything was good because I had certain things lined up. Um, I had certain things lined up. I had um, songs coming out. I also had a music video to come out, but I felt like there was something missing. I felt empty. I felt lost. I was sad. I was depressed. And uh, <laughs> I was, I, I spoke about this in a testimony. You know, I was dependent on drugs and alcohol to really exist, to really cope. And uh, I realized that there was something, something wrong on another level based on one night when I went, I, I slept with my mom and, uh, you know, I asked her to pray for me and I asked her to play Cindy Trim prayer for me. And my body was reacting violently to it. So I realized that there was something spiritually wrong. And uh, when I went to church, that was when I got deliverance. Whatever was inside what a whole a strong whole demon whatever it was left and mm -hmm. from that time I felt free never needed the never have the need to drink or smoke or anything at all I found my happiness back and I felt free and I said you know something I am going to commit myself to God and may I go worship him and I told the person who was dealing with the video to scrap it. I had um, a photo shoot lined up, I sent back the money and everything. I just said, hey, different part. Mm -hmm. So when you said that you were relying on drugs and, and alcohol, when you say drugs, what type of drugs are you referring to? I used to take um, a prescription pill named mm, Fentamin. Mm -hmm. It's for weight loss, but it made me feel high. And whenever I had that, and when I, when I, especially if I drink with it, it got me high. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, also weed, me uh -huh. smoke, my weed, <laughs> me smoking weed was on a different level. Me, when I did not have it, I could not cope. Me smoke the seed, me smoke the stem. My men have no reason I'm put it in a in a Bible leaf. It was that bad. Mm -hmm. All right. On this mm -hmm. new journey that you're on, um, before now, you had a specific kind of friend circle. And I would assume that most of this, these friends would have been off dance hall or in the world. How has you becoming a Christian changed your friend circle? Um <laughs> the funny thing is, I'm not really, I'm really a homebody, even when, when in dance hall, most of my friends are on my phone. I mean, I'm different from, um, like sometimes I, there was a point when I used to hang around with Tommy a lot, 
and I um we kind of I was going in a different direction and he was going in a different direction. I'm just stay to myself basically and then when I got converted it was it was even more because I changed my number and basically most of the people who I had contact with most of them didn't have any contact for me anymore. Mm-hmm. But some of us rekindled and I do send out certain things to them at time to time to inspire them and encourage them. Mm-hmm. All right. So you refer to yourself on Instagram as Destiny Psycho Doll, but below that you have the matriarch. At some point, are you going to remove that name, Destiny Psycho Doll, or it's still, you still feel as if it's a part of you? It's not a part of me, none at all. The thing is, Instagram is giving me a hard time to change it because I'm verified. Mm-hmm. You know, so they very so I can't just change it like everybody else. I have to go through Instagram support. I'm send them, I've been sending in sending them messages for the past six months or so and nothing yet. So I created a new page. Because if it's not changed by a certain time, then I'm just going to give up the page. Okay, as simple as that. Let's talk about the evolution of of destiny. Of destiny. Um, coming from mm-hmm. this place where the most you know is dancehall, because you've been a part of it for so long. Talk to me about jumping from right there to where you are now. Like, how do you feel holistically? I feel good. I feel good. I have, all right, dance hall, it started to feel like work. It wasn't fun for me anymore. You know, it used to be fun. And then it just felt like work. I looked around and everything just seemed fake. Everybody seemed fake. I'm going to say, mm, it, it never gave me a good feeling anymore. And so making the transition was, it was kind of easy. I just made up my mind that I don't want that life anymore. And uh, this is what I am doing now. And uh, I said I was going to stop doing music altogether. And uh, I, I, I couldn't stay away. Yeah. <laughs> because just walking around and cleaning up song come to me just like that. So I realized that I cannot stay away. Just like when we used to make nice for, for, for the devil or for the kingdom of darkness, we have to go make some nice for God's same way. Mm-hmm. But um, while about two years ago, I wanted to do start a candle business and I bought all the stuff and I did not get around to really starting. Mm-hmm. And uh, last year, I said, you know what? I'm going to start making them now. And I started and I got a lot of support, you know, so I'm officially a Chandler. <laughs> a oh, yeah. and I've, I've seen them online and they look absolutely delicious. They look like something you can actually eat. But before we <laughs> jump over into the candles, you had mentioned that a lot of times producers would have been inappropriate in terms of the mm. things that they would say to you as a woman, just trying to go to studio and record. Um, Mm -hmm. Do you believe that some of those inappropriate behavior was what was bothering you at the time when you reached out to your mother? No, definitely not. No, no, not at all. Mm -mm. At that time, no. All right, let me tell you, before I was signed to Tommy, I used to get those problems. When I was signed to him, a lot of people, thought that we were together so you know them used to hold them own out of respect and then afterwards you know some people would come and but me put them in a them place early so me never really and it's also about sometimes so you carry yourself you understand so when my go for do business I'm all about business you know and I the keke 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 and them kind of thing that me go for do business me do business so me, yeah I wasn't having that problem at the time Mm-hmm. There's a there there might be people out there, especially in this specific industry, who might be battling with um oh, love dance all, but may I think about God at the same time, 
they're in they're in between transition and they're wondering what they should do what would you say to that that person no no sweeter than god man no not all seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and everything else shall be added you know it's a thing with us we 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 tend to struggle with that a lot because we say we love god but we we don't want to serve him wholeheartedly. We want the blessings, but we don't want the man who gives the blessings. We want the healer, we don't want. We want the help, but we don't want the healer, if you know what I'm saying. You understand? So basically, people going through that, may I say to them, say, not, not out there, not, not out there. Nothing is really out there. With God, you find real peace and happiness real peace out of road give you fun but god give you joy so i would say to them just make the transition make the transition all right in, in, regards, regards, <laughs> in regards to music i mean you cannot no in no way throw away your talent Tell me what you're doing right now in terms of music and creating God music. Is, is the inspiration coming as quickly as it used to? It does, because I'll be just cleaning, walking around cleaning, and the song just come to me. Them say me, you're going to need a wash off the bus, but I'm in need of the almighty touch. Now the devil no offering. Now we are them gathering in a jet who for me trust. And when the wicked deceive me, got up for me dead, all I walk them with three, them and the up your woman could never get the victory. Them never know me, I want to judge a pitney, you know, stuff like that. Um, It comes easy, same way, easy, mm -hmm. same way. The other day, I, uh, um, the other night I was laying in there and another one came to me. Um, When I am... When I was down, when I was low, feeling down, Lord, you turned my life around, looked in the mirror, didn't see myself, it felt like God. My soul had fled. Holy is your name. You know, stuff like that. It mm -hmm. come easy, same. Ghost pimples. Ghost pimples, <laughs> trust me. Um, I listen to your lives sometimes, um, your videos online, and I see how passionate you are and how knowledgeable you are of the business and how aware you are of yourself. No, it's a common thing for females to battle with each other. Females, mm -hmm. from my perspective, it's not done the way the man them do it on stage. It's <laughs> on stage and it's off stage. It's the, the, the bickering, the battling between females, even though you could see it online. You as a woman of God know you've done it all. You've seen it all. What would you say to some of these young, these young women who are just fighting each other publicly on, online? I would say everybody have a spot, right? If somebody likes somebody, it does not mean say them not go like you. Everybody have a spot. Everybody, you can do what the other person is doing. You understand? So just be confident in yourself. I know that. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You say even the men in the industry, them set the woman against each other too. They set females against each other in the sense that they make you feel like you cannot coexist. By doing simple little things, you have a rhythm. A producer, we have a rhythm and we say, hey, I have a rhythm, you know. Are you alone, me I put on it out? You're the only female. One female alone. Why? There are other females out there who are talented. You know, put one man on the reading. Come on. Um, they say things like, um, I have a reading, may I put such and such female on it? So make sure you go hard. You're not saying that to the men. Mm -hmm. Um, you have a juggling, and say there is a juggling, and you have men on it, and you have females. I was told one at the time, say, here, put your song there, 
put the, the man them song on it and your song only as a female to put out there. Why? Right. And I can just imagine right. that that's what other females experience. So it, it you subconsciously feel like women cannot coexist. Then put it in your subconscious. Say, is uno cannot coexist. So the man them need to stop that. I've seen where some some producers have done some all rhythm, um, all female rhythm. Kudos to them. That's great. Keep it up, women. Stick together, work together, no fight against each other. No fight against each other because them thing they're petty. Mm -hmm. Petty, petty, petty. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel as if like back in the day before social media got so prevalent, when um these females are set up to battle against each other, it was more to propel their their career. Did you find yourself in situations like that when you were in, in the industry, basically fighting, maybe like in a playful way because then the audience would know what's going on in the back, but you give them something which would put you guys in the spotlight a little bit more? All right. When, when, <laughs> when that thing came out with Lisa Hype a long time ago, I was told to do a song disrespecting her to get clothes. Me say no, me not do it because me not go bring her down. You understand? Um, I have been told, hey, go get spice. Why? Um, I was even told at one point to to say that I'm the new, when when um Lady Saw stepped down say I'm the new feet um dancer queen queen of that yeah and then yeah. something that. so i've been you know them coming on my ears with the thing them all the while and i just never did it because me not see the me not see why me for try to pull somebody else down um the only thing i i did a song robbery which was really comedic you know i don't know if you know that song it was written by um bonner he wrote he wrote um some like two verses I wrote one of them and when he sent it to me I said no man this bad but it didn't sound as if I was tearing down nobody it was a song to me I rap the artist them and it was more comedy than anything else uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay um I found that that was very important to ask and I wanted to hear your opinion because I feel like these days it's just going like around the clock, around the clock, around the clock, the disrespect, and it's not seeming as a playful situation anymore. It feel like a situation where something can kick off at any time, you know, versus when you did that song, Robert, you, you said it was more of a playful situation and not so much of a disrespect. Right. All right, mm -hmm. so, how how do you plan to, are you planning on going back in the public's eye with gospel music? Uh, definitely. Definitely. Lady As song. I said before. Yeah. You said Lady yeah. Saw. Earlier in your career, Lady Saw sent for you and another young lady, right? <laughs> you want a piece of the interview. <laughs> It looks like he want a piece of it. <laughs> All right, you said earlier on, Lady Saw had sent for you and another female. That's when both you and Lady Saw, Lady Saw was in the dance hall and you was trying to break into it. But mm -hmm. you're now a Christian and so is Lady Saw. Have you reached out to Lady Saw in any way? Have you guys had any form of conversation about where the both of you are right now? <laughs> yes, um, she was one of the first persons to um, encourage me to, you know, stay focused and don't have one foot in and one foot out. She sent me a lengthy voice note wow. saying to stay grounded, yeah, and walk with God. Mm -hmm. You know, I've spoken to her a few times after that, too, about two times after that, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. She's always encouraging. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. 
I, I do find, I do see that I've um, interviewed her a couple of times and I realize that Lady Sai is a very, very supportive, warm and welcoming yeah. lady, you know, so God bless her in every way. Um, every for time. young people who want to join the church, there is something that's kind of holding back most of the times. I can't wear my earring no more. I can't wear my makeup. I can't dress up and look at <laughs> you know, but I'm looking mm -hmm. at you right now, which I've seen that it, it has changed over the years. Like you still can dress up. You still can look mm -hmm. nice without being too outrageous. What would you say right. to that person? I heard somebody say, um, I think it was Sister Faith who said, you're born again, no boring again. Mm hmm when you're baptized, you're born again, you're not boring again. So you still can fix up yourself. Just um, fix up yourself, but dress modestly. You're not going to reveal like how you used to reveal before. But you can still fix yourself just as long as that's not your main focus. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Destiny, um, I enjoy talking to you and I enjoy what this conversation. I enjoy watching you online. Um, you have so so much powerful things to say when you when you throw your testimonies out there. Is it that you sit down and you think about these things, or it come to your mind and you say, you know what, I'm gonna preach to the people today? It comes to me. It comes to me, and I just have to let it so. Yeah encourage somebody because i know a lot of us we all go through the same things you know we all go at some different some well, how should i put it no we go through similar situations throughout life maybe at some point or another so if i can speak about my life and encourage somebody else then we just have to do that all right. Christianity is a beautiful thing. And a lot of us feel safe in Christianity for those who believe in God. But mm -hmm. there are also people who find themselves speaking about the struggles that they also face in church. Mm -hmm. Because similar to dance hall, some of the struggles that you face in dance hall, it's also right there in the church. Sister Pike and <laughs> sister Past and D kind of fight. You understand <laughs> all these <laughs> all these little things. Have you experienced mm -hmm. any of this so far? No, I haven't. <laughs> Not yet. I haven't done thank the Lord. I haven't. But even if, you know, I always say, no, watch what. No, don't listen to what nobody go through. Or, or watch what's happening. Just know what you are going to church for. Know what you want and know what you are going for. No pay attention to what everybody say about all our going in at the church. Yeah, exactly. If it's for you, it's for you. If you want to go, go. Don't let nobody hold you back. Definitely. What Definitely. is it? What is it about a destiny that you feel as if your audience don't know about you and you would like them to, to, to know and understand truly who destiny is? Huh. You know, I think um, based on the music that I used to do, I think a lot of people had a misconception that I um, <laughs> I was a devil worshiper. <laughs> Some people actually came to me with that. I remember even when I did Real Bad Girl and uh, the video came out, even a family member linked me and I said, hey, I'm most careful because this look like me get involved in the Illuminati and all kind, of, all kind of ridiculous stuff. But I was always a prayerful sinner. You know, me not mix up in nothing evil. No, not at all. Me always I say God. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to get that out there. All right, perfectly. Um, let's talk about your 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 line now, your candle line. Tell me about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, as I was saying, I had I, I bought the stuff to do it from a while back, and then last year I decided to settle down and do it, and it's been going well, very well. Um, 
I make scented candles and I also make dessert candles and the, the dessert candles are not the ones that look like desserts. I scream. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I have like a cookie. I make them with cookie and ice cream, cookie and whipped milk. cream. Whipped, so yeah, whipped cream, all of that good stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Where, so, where you got the idea to do the, the dessert ones though? Because I've never seen that before. You know, um it just came to me. <laughs> I don't know why it just came to me. I said, Oh, that would that would look so cool. That would look so cute. And then I did some research and yeah, I just came up with it. Okay, perfectly. All right. The Debian Newman project is about evolution, showing growth. Um mm -hmm mainly with women. And I feel as if that as you progress in your Christianity, I want to have another conversation with you when you put out mm -hmm. your first gospel song, when you put out your first gospel album, when you start preach, when you jump up on the pulpit, all of those <laughs> things. I want to be ex what? You're not, what? You're not just there to sit in the congregation. <laughs> Jump up on the pulpit. Uh, Jump on the pulpit. Because someone like you that is so powerful when you speak, why keep it to yourself? And why keep it online? Go ahead and jump on the pulpit and show them who destiny is and what you're there to offer. Mm. So I believe that as you progress, I want to be a part of that progression. So the next time I talk to you, I'll be speaking to you about your song, your album, and Sister Destiny going to be on the, on the pulpit. <laughs> well, wherever God leads me, I will definitely go wherever he leads. All right, Destiny, thank you for sitting with me. Do you have any last words? Um, I just want to say the people out there, make time for God. You know, when we hear the word repent, we don't know, it coming like a curse word. We get afraid more while when we hear the word, they rip sure. Because nobody wants, you know, want to give up the man. You know, want to give up the sex. You don't want to give up. There are so many things you don't want to give up. But may I tell you, say, it is important to put God first. Because when you run down all those things, you know, there's always a void. Something feel wrong. And what, what is wrong is that God is missing. So put God first in everything and make him lead you, make him guide you. Even if, um, even if you don't know how to pray, just talk to him like how you talk to a friend and just talk to him and let him lead you and let him guide you. God bless you all. God bless. God bless Destiny. Thank you so much for sitting with me and we'll definitely be in touch because I want to see all all good things happening for you. Candle business, church business, every business. Thank you very, very much, Debbie. All right. One more thing. Um, mm -hmm. Would it be possible for you to lead us out in prayer? Sure. Heavenly Father, as we gather here before you, dear God, I just want to give you thanks and praise for all that you have done for us, all that you continue to do, dear God. When we look into the heavens at your glory, dear God, we just want to give you praise, almighty God. Lord, I'm asking you, please, to draw close to us. You said if we draw close to you, you will draw close to us. Draw close to us because we need you in these times more than ever before. Mighty God, I give you thanks and praise for all of your blessings. And I'm just asking you to lead us and guide us in the right direction, dear God. In your holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, Destiny. Trust me, my eyes are full of tears. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sitting and talking with me. Thank you for having me, Deb. Deb. <laughs> no problem. All right, Destiny, take care and we'll be in touch. All right. All right. Now that you guys have watched another conversation from the Debian Newman Project, it's time for you to 
like, share, comment, and subscribe. Catch you on the next episode.